Hey you all, Carpetbagger here coming to you live from the north. More specifically today we are in Cincinnati, Ohio and um, last night I was trying to figure out what to do today, what to do here in the Cincinnati area. There was a couple ideas I had. I thought maybe I could drive up north an hour and uh, go to the Air Force Museum. A lot of people had recommended that. Also, a lot of people had recommended the Cincinnati Zoo here in Cincinnati. And I was kind of 50-50 on which one to visit, so I ended up putting out a poll, kind of an impromptu choose my adventure, and uh, allowed you guys to vote on what I would do today. And you guys chose the Cincinnati Zoo. So we're over here to visit the zoo. It is, uh, what is today? Today is a Monday. So I was not expecting it to be that busy at the zoo, and I was wrong, because I drove by the zoo, it said no parking, the parking lots were full, um, street parking only, so I drove into this neighborhood. I was able to find some, uh, some street parking. I'm a little bit a ways away from the zoo. I was not expecting um, the zoo to be busy today, but um, I was foolish, because it is clearly going to be busy. Um, the weather is, Perfect. This is unbelievably nice weather, and uh, that's probably why so many people made the decision to come to the zoo today. So hopefully, hopefully there's still tickets available, and I'll be able to get um, in the zoo. I'm trying to see, yeah, I had to park a little bit away. I don't know if I'm like maybe a mile or so away from the entrance to the zoo. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to get inside the zoo where the entrance is. I know the parking lots are up here just a little bit, but we're gonna have a hopefully relaxing day here at the zoo, or maybe it will be a hectic, crowded day at the zoo. Either way, please follow me. So I'm walking through this neighborhood here. I see uh, there's some sort of walkway over the street. I don't know, I wonder how these people feel about having their neighborhood turned into <laughs> the parking lot for the zoo. Uh-oh, the ambulance thing over here. Yeah, there's a parking lot over there. I see people walking over the walkway here, so I'm thinking the zoo entrance is over this way. Okay, so Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Gardens, but how do we get up there? I guess we'll uh, head down this way and see if we can uh, find our way in. Now it does look like there's two of the zoo parking lots that are actually under construction. So there's three parking lots, two of them are down for construction, which may explain why it was so hard to find parking. And we have made it here at the gate for the Cincinnati Zoo. Now I do like to go to different zoos occasionally. I have tried to check out some of the uh, better zoos, some of the more, uh, more popular zoos in the country. And uh, of course, I'm always open to suggestions if there's zoos you guys would like to see me check out. Leave a comment in the comment section. But one thing here about the Cincinnati Zoo is there is a lot I of interesting history, a lot of interesting famous animals that have resided here at the zoo. So I'm interested to kind of dig in and some of the history on some of the animals that lived here. Some very, very notorious uh, residents here at the Cincinnati Zoo. All right, and we have made it inside the zoo. And one of the first things I notice is this. The soda machine has uh, Fiona, the hippo on it. I think she is the most famous current resident to the Cincinnati Zoo. She was a hippo that was born uh, six weeks prematurely and uh, was able to survive and uh, became an online celebrity, and she's still here. So hopefully we'll get to see Fiona today. See them advertising Fiona here right on the Pepsi machine. All right, look for the star that says you are here, and we are there. We definitely, uh, definitely want to see the hippos. Definitely want to see if we can see Fiona. So I guess we're gonna head uh, down this way through Africa. Go check out the hippos. All right, let's see if we can take one of these scooter pals through the, uh, through the zoo. They're known as fur wheelers instead of four wheelers. They're called fur wheelers because they have fur on them. Normally it's a four wheelers. 
but uh, they're fur wheelers because they have fur. Now, uh, 60 minutes is $26, so I think as fun as it would be to ride around the zoo in one of these, I think, uh, I think that would get very expensive. So this is a zoo slash botanical gardens. I know a lot of just natural, uh, natural beauty, natural things. There wasn't a lot of like gift shops or flashy things when we first entered. But uh, yeah, we'll kind of wind our way down the path and see if we can make our way to those hippos. Oh, look at this. There's some elephants. You can see like part of the Cincinnati skyline there. Are you okay? These elephants. <laughs> see the back end of the elephant there. And there's one back there behind the pole. And look here, hiding in the bushes, we have a little baby elephant statue. You can see where people have uh, pet him on the head, where people have sat on his head. You know, with these, uh, these type of statues, you get the green patina covering. You can always tell the places where people like to touch, where people like to sit, because they're worn off. And you can see the original color underneath. Now, it looks like there's a carousel out there in the lake, but it does not look like it is uh, currently operational, at least not today. But uh, look at this, we do have the uh, zoo train rolling across the bridge here. Look at this, over on the rock here, have a Dr. Seuss quote, who will speak for the trees? That is from the, uh, from the Lorax. Let's actually grab some train tickets and uh, hop aboard the safari train. Looks like there's quite a few people in line for the train, but you know what they say? Good things come to those who wait. And our chariot awaits. Now we scramble for train seats. Let's see if we can get a see if we can get a good seat here near the back, where you get the uh, wilder ride. Oh, here we go! Slowly lurching out of the station here. Okay, looks like we can see some see some penguins over there. Oh, okay. There's a wolf. It's a wolf right there. Hey, Wolfie. Hey, Wolfie! Yeah. Wolf just hanging out there near the train track. Some more wolves down there. Looks like we're heading over a bridge here. You can actually see down there, oh yeah, there's like a whole flock of pink flamingos down there. And you can see the train there going over top, the flamingos. Okay, train's picking up some speed here. Headed by the barnyard here. See some goats. Oh, look at that. Is that a llama? Yeah, definitely got to appreciate a zoo train where you can actually see some of the animals. There's a few zoo trains out there where I don't think you actually see animals on the train. But so far, this is a pretty, pretty nice zoo train. A little peek at the carousel here. Again, not operating today, but looks like it's got some fun uh, figures on it. See a cheetah. A cheetah there. There's a camel. Head now over top uh, the lake here. You see some ducks down there. Oh, there's a turtle on the log too. As fun as uh, the train ride was, I think it is time. To find the, to find these hippos. Stop over here and visit the sleepiest creatures in the land. The lions there, passed out, as usual. It's a glass viewing area here. We can get a closer look at the uh, lions sleeping. Yep, sleepy lions. What do lions dream of? 
when they take their little lion snooze. Do they dream of mauling zebras? Halle Berry in her Catwoman suit. Don't you worry your little lion heads, we're gonna get you back to Tyson in your cozy lion beds. Then we're gonna find our best friend Doug and then we're gonna give him a best friend hug. Doug, Doug, oh Dougie, Doug, Dougie, Dougie, Doug, Doug. Oh wow, look at this. Check out these giraffes here. Oh, where are they going? Are they leaving? We're all headed out? No, 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 no. <laughs> And lions and giraffes are amazing. We gotta find, we gotta find these hippos. Check out the ostrich there. Hey, ostrich, what you doing? Another ostrich back there. These are painted dogs. Yeah, very pretty. And these here allow you to actually see what you would look like if you had painted dog ears. Let's see if I, can, if I can get in here. There we go. Look at me. I'm a painted dog. And don't try to whisper because I'll hear you. Okay, this is a really cool zoo. I wish the way you're able to get so close to the animals. Look at these meerkats there. Hey, little meerkat. What you doing? Thinking about going one of those holes? Oh, oh look, there's one. Over there. Yeah, you can see the series of holes there. There's a little guy. Now look at all the meerkats, they're so cute. Oh, look at that. They're all standing up. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You guys like to stand up like people? That's some good standing. They're all looking at me. <gasps> what do you guys want? <laughs> and we have made it to Hippo Cove. See if we can find Fiona, the uh, zoo's most famous resident. Oh yeah, I see people gathered here around the hippo enclosure. Oh my goodness. Oh, I see a hippo. Oh, look at there. Oh, look, there's one hippo poking their head up. Oh, that's amazing. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, look, you can see their massive bodies underwater here. Actually surrounded by fish. And you can peek up, peek up there. And uh, I, asked a, I asked another guest, and they said, this is Fiona over here. With her uh, nose there in the crevice. That is Fiona, the internet superstar. Was made famous, she was born six weeks early. And uh, of course, was a medical miracle, the first Hippo born at the zoo in 75 years and uh, became an online celebrity due in large in part to her uh, adorableness. So under the water there we can see that's Fritz, the baby hippo. We can see him prancing, prancing along the bottom of the water there. Oh, look at him go! Moves so quickly underwater. And underwater there. Oh look at that. Oh man. Oh, you can see the hippo snuggling there. Snuggling with the baby. Oh, that is so sweet. So sweet. Well, Fritz has come over here to see his uh, his big sister, Fiona. Yes, look how big, look how big that is. The adult hippo. It's huge. Yeah. Emerging from the top of the water there. Oh, look at that. Look at that. He was. Little baby Fritz. He went over here to snuggle with his big sister, Fiona. You see, Fritz is the one closer to us. Fiona there. Uh, you can see the adult, the adult hippo, the fully grown hippo emerging. Oh my goodness. So amazing. 
Yeah, there's another adult hippo over here. Oh, what are they doing? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Hey there. Hey. Oh wow. Oh. <laughs> oh wow. It's amazing. Feet. Yeah, I must say, this is pretty special here, this hippo display. Uh, definitely uh, the amazing views of the hippos and uh, such an adorable hippo family. One of my favorite animals to check out at the zoo, the red panda. Now, I used to think that it was all about the uh, giant panda, but I don't know. I feel like now I view the red panda and giant panda on equal footing. I think they're both beautiful, amazing creatures. Oh, look at that. The red panda there just hanging out. Oh, here he goes. There they go. Oh, look at that. So cute. Oh, it's getting really high up there in the tree. Going for a climb. Oh, look at that. Another, uh, another panda just came there out of the burrow. I think he saw his shadow. Oh wait, oh, he doesn't like he doesn't like it out here. He's going back into his burrow. Come on, show your face. He don't want to. Oh, there he. Oh, there you go. Are they going back to the burrow? It's like, all right, just want to give y'all show. All right, they're done. Finished. What's wrong, buddy? You tuckered out? And look what we got here. A couple of uh, bald eagles just hanging around. Now I'm guessing by the fact that they're just sitting on the ground, that there's no enclosure over them. I'm guessing these are probably injured uh, bald eagles that cannot, uh, cannot fly. So I guess just uh, recuperating here at the Cincinnati Zoo. Yeah, it says here these are injured bald eagles, which uh, definitely explains why they, why they can't just fly away. All right, let's take a look at the gorillas. Yeah, you can see some gorillas right there. And we have this plaque over here that has uh, Many of the gorillas that have lived here at the Cincinnati Zoo over the years says that they've been here since the 1930s. That over 70 gorillas have lived here. You can see it gives the different names. There's Ellie, Amani there. There's Gladys. But uh, probably, for maybe very unfortunate reasons, the most famous gorilla to uh, ever live here at the uh, Cincinnati Zoo is Harambe, and uh, Harambe was a, was a very, very sad story, um, made it more infamous after his passing when a, uh, a child had uh, snuck into the enclosure, a young child. Um, Harambe had grabbed grabbed the child and uh, was, was dragging the child around. No one knew what, you know, no one knew what was going on in the gorilla's head. He was running around holding a child, and uh, the zoo staff had to make the unfortunate uh, decision to uh, to shoot Harambe and uh, and kill him um, in order to save the child and this this uh, became national news a big national story with different people discussing the uh, different aspects of the story 
you know, I, I just feel it's a, it's a sad situation for everyone, you know. Um, I'm not really concerned about, uh, you know, pointing the finger. I think everyone involved tried to, to make the best decision uh, for the moment. But, uh, yeah, definitely uh, an unfortunate situation that led to a very infamous, infamous gorilla. And uh, here he is, you know. They did not try to cover up his existence. They didn't try to, uh, to whitewash uh, the fact that he lived here. At the zoo, there is uh, Harambe. Can we move on to something else? Sponsor of the uh, of the uh, gorilla exhibit is Gorilla Glue, which is really great. You know, really great uh, market synergy. And yeah, mentioned again over here, they do have a uh, a. Uh, section on Harambe in 2016, the tragic death of beloved silverback Harambe demonstrated the compelling power of a single gorilla has to inspire the world to take notice and care. So, uh, you know, they acknowledge the, uh, you know, kind of the incident and what uh, came from that incident. Um, yeah, very, just very sad, like I said. I don't necessarily uh, feel, I feel it's easy to point fingers, but um, I think everyone in the situation uh, just did what they thought was best. They did not have a lot of time to uh, to weigh the options, they just had to do what was best to uh, save a uh, save a child. Peek down here in the uh, gorilla cave here. Okay, hey buddy, there is a big there is a big gorilla right there. A big gorilla. Wow. Silverback gorilla. Yeah. Silverback gorilla. Amazing. Uh, yeah, they are definitely, and uh, the gorillas are, you know, those animals that just, you know, you look at them and it just brings, you know, this natural awe, you know, natural connectiveness that we as humans have to the animal kingdom. Ellie. Oh, look at that. I didn't even know there was a gorilla down there. Oh, there's... Crawling up. Hey, Mama. Mama. Mama has come up. Oh, wow. I didn't know they could go down in that uh, Chewy's down there. crevice there. So yeah, watching the video where the Harambe incident took place, yeah, you can, like I said, you can see the gorillas can actually access this lower area here. So it would have been over in this corner right here that uh, the little boy, I guess, climbed, tried to climb in and fell down into the, into the, kind of the pit there. And then uh, Harambe would, uh, would take the boy. It was really, you know, it's hard to tell what he was thinking. He was being gentle at some moments, being more aggressive at other moments. And yeah, so it would have been right along here that this uh, infamous uh, incident occurred. This incident that uh, became notorious all across all across the world. Oh, jeez! That was startling. Oh, jeez. Wow. Something about uh, having a gorilla smacking the... That's crazy. This is kind of scary. My heart's pumping. My heart's pumping from the gorilla smacking the glass. Wow. So here at the Cincinnati Zoo, we've talked about some of the most uh, famous and infamous animals that have lived here. We talked about uh, Fiona. The, uh, the premature hippo, we talked about Harambe, the gorilla. But here is another infamous animal here from the uh, Cincinnati Zoo. This is a statue of Martha the passenger pigeon. Now, Martha was the very last passenger pigeon. Now, the story behind passenger pigeons, very sad. They were one time so prominent in the United States, they would cloud out the sky so people would just indiscriminately shoot them and their, their numbers quickly diminished all down to one. Martha here, named after Martha Washington, according to the plaque here, um, lived here at the Cincinnati Zoo, is the very last ever passenger pigeon, died in 1914 in that building. That, she was in that building when she passed away. Now I've actually seen the taxidermied Martha. They have her on display at the Smithsonian, at least I, I, I did see her there. I don't know if she is on permanent display, but I have seen Martha at uh, the Smithsonian. Uh, what's even crazier about this? 
that uh, this building was the very location where passenger pigeons became extinct, but it was also the exact location where another species of bird went extinct in, uh, let me see, when was it? In, in uh, 1918, so six years after Martha died, Inca, the very last Carolina parakeet, passed away. Now, I don't know, I don't think Inca is taxidermied. I don't think I have seen Inca, but uh, that is absolutely mind-blowing that this building here was the location where two entire species of animals went extinct. I wonder if there's any other building in the world where two separate uh, animal species went extinct. So yeah, man, Martha. Just uh, think of Martha as uh, as uh, just a, a symbol of, of what man can do to a, to a species. Can take a species from vast overpopulation and within just a matter of years, it uh, is gone forever. So this small building, this small Japanese style building, is the old aviary here at the Cincinnati Zoo. There's no longer any animals kept in there. This building originally built in 18... 75 but you actually we actually can go inside they have a memorial to Martha on the inside oh yeah see Martha's legacy lessons from the passenger pigeon you can see how they uh, how they would just travel like a big cloud there until uh, till the very end when uh, reduced down to just one bird yeah, it says here the passenger pigeon from billions to none. It says there was five billion in the early 1800s once uh, settlers came in and uh, started shooting them. Just a hundred years later, they were completely, completely eliminated. So apparently it wasn't just guns. While they would just fire their guns at the sky and kill passenger pigeons, they actually used other methods such as nets and uh, poison and even chopping down trees to destroy their nests. You know, humans, I, I, you know, this wasn't an accident. Humans were determined to cause an extinction here and, uh, and succeeded, sadly. And it talks about Martha here. It says that 1900, also in Ohio, the last, uh, last wild pigeon was shot. The zoo uh, had Martha and they realized that they needed to do something about it. They did try to find a mate to start breeding them, but I don't know, when it gets down, gets down to that low of a gene pool, when you only can identify one species on the planet, it's pretty much the writings on the wall. You can't, uh, you don't want to know about science, you can't just take, you know, one male, one female and repopulate. That's just too small of a gene pool. You know, the, eventually you'd have birds so inbred that uh, they wouldn't be able to survive. But yeah, sadly, Martha died in, uh, in uh, 19, 1914. It says her body was frozen in a 300 pound block of ice and shipped to the Smithsonian. Now we can see a picture, picture of Martha right there. I definitely recommend if she's on display at the Smithsonian Natural, Museum of Natural History to please check her out. Up in the rafters there, you can see the paper birds. And it's a little dark in here, but uh, there is, looks like some taxidermied passenger pigeons in here. These are not, obviously not Martha. For some reason, I guess just the temperature, the glass is very foggy here. Let me take a look at, uh, at the pigeons. Of course, Martha, kind of a symbol on how fast wildlife can uh, can be eliminated. It talks here about some of the other efforts to save uh, wild animals. But let's check out some night hunters. Ooh, sounds ominous. Oh. Hey, hey there. This is an ard wolf. Look at that. Sleeping. 
This is called a potto. Hey, little potto. Oh, where's he going? Where are you going, potto? You can see the vampire bats there. Look at that. They're just drinking. Drinking blood. They're drinking just a bowl of blood that they're drinking out of. Black-footed cat there, like a teeny tiny. Yes, hey kitty. What you doing? What's he looking at? What's he looking at there? Hey kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Ah, oh, hey there. Oh, you're a pretty black-footed cat. Hey there. Hi. Oh, hey there. Hi. Oh, there he goes. His ears. Oh, my goodness. Hi. I think that was a girl. Did you guys know him like his nose? Uh. If I look. Ah. Yeah. No. Hi. Well, look back there. I see a rhinoceros. Kind of like a cross between a uh, hippo and a unicorn. Okay, I'm pretty excited about this. Apparently they have manatees here at the uh, Cincinnati Zoo. You don't see manatees everywhere. They're kind of a, kind of a rare find with zoos and aquariums and they are one of my, uh, one of my favorite animals. Okay, so we enter here through a Florida swamp area. I don't see any gators in here. Looks like they may, may be hiding, but uh, we can touch a replica of a baby alligator. Hey, buddy. Yeah, I couldn't find any alligators, but I do spot an American crocodile right there. See him there with his pointy nose? Oh, okay. There's an alligator of the brass variety. There's a row of manatee benches here, or manta seats, if you will. But sadly, I'm not seeing any of the actual manatees in here. I don't know if they have gone in for the night, if they are tucked in their beds. Looks like there is some lettuce floating at the top, but uh, yeah, I don't see any manatees and you know they're not very good hiders so I don't know uh, I don't know where they are oh look at this look at this it's a little tiny baby manatee there oh there he goes oh, look at he's going up for some uh, for some munchies there yeah it says that these are all manatees that are being re rehabilitated I guess the plan is to re release them into the wild so yeah, there's a very young manatee there. Very, very tiny. Oh yeah, looks like he got himself a big uh, big mouthful of lettuce there. Oh, num num num, is that some good lettuce there? Oh, look at him chew up that lettuce. Oh, I love manatees. Up here on the ceiling, see a manatee floating through the air, but watch out, oh no. Watch out for that boat, buddy. Yeah, boat's the natural predator of the manatee. And this is what's going on inside. There we have a manatee skeleton. Less cute with their skin and flesh off. And it is time to exit through the gift shop. So Jen wanted me to get her a, uh, a hippo souvenir. So she was a big fan of Fiona, following Fiona on uh, social media. And there's quite a bit of hippo merchandise here. Hippo coffee cups. Here is the family that we saw. 
the uh, the hippo family. That's Fiona there. That's little Fritz. And uh, look at this. Okay, so this is not an original painting, but that is a hippo kiss. That is uh, little baby Fritz the hippo kissed a paper and left with, with paint and left that. And then now they uh, printed them out and selling them in the gift shop. It says, I met the bloat. Is a group of hippos a bloat of hippos? So we have Fiona and Fritz, and I guess the parents are Tucker and Bibi. Tucker must be that big, big, giant one. And then Bibi is the mother. You see here, Fiona has her own line of, uh, of children's books. Uh, there's Meet Fiona the Hippo, Happy Birthday, Fiona. There is a Fiona at bedtime. Some Christmas ornaments there, a little Fiona Christmas ornament. Yeah, you can definitely see the hippos are the uh, star attraction here at the Cincinnati Zoo. The hippo Tato there. Is this supposed to be a parody of that uh, Nirvana album? <laughs> so I did purchase a, a little plushy Fiona to bring home to Jen. She, uh, I think she, I think she will enjoy this. So uh, it's a surprise. Don't, don't tell Jen. But uh, I, yeah, this is an amazing zoo. I, I love this zoo. Um, I didn't mention this. I forgot to mention it at the beginning. It's only, it was only I think fifteen dollars. I bought a ticket online. It ended up being about fifteen dollars, which is pretty insanely cheap for zoo tickets uh, in in these modern times. And I, I really love the zoo. You know, it's not. I would say it's not the flashiest zoo. They don't have a lot of rides or other attractions. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Just a zoo but just uh, some of the selection of animals they have here, um, the way the animals are presented, the way the enclosures are presented are just amazing. That you can get up close to the hippos like that. The hippos really are a huge highlight. Um, you know, also the manatees were, were another big highlight to me, the red pandas, and I just go on and on. I just, you know, some zoos just, to me, do a better job of like just presenting the animals. And like I said, it's kind of a simple zoo in the way it's laid out, the way it's presented, but uh, I feel, you know, just a, a quality experience. I definitely would rank this up there with some of the uh, top zoos in uh, in the country. And of course, just, you know, the interesting history here, the modern history with, uh, you know, Fiona becoming a, uh, a online celebrity, you know, the, the, the tragic but poignant uh, story of Harambe, and of course, the tragic uh, extinction of the passenger pigeon that occurred right here at this zoo just so you know so much history here and uh, really really quality place i definitely if you, if you are a fan of zoos if you're a traveling fan of zoos i would definitely not skip over the uh the cincinnati zoo uh, but thank you guys so much um i thank you for voting to send me to the zoo uh, i'm sure i would have had fun either place the air force museum or the zoo but i definitely had a good time here at the zoo today I have to be at Transworld um, in a few days. I think I'm checking out of my hotel room tomorrow morning here in uh, Cincinnati. I'm not sure. Um, tomorrow and the next day, I'm not, I haven't mapped out yet. I'm probably gonna sit down and figure out what I'm doing the next two days. Um, you know, while I'm heading west towards uh, St. Louis, but that should be a week packed of spooky fun at, uh, at Transworld. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, of course, if you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country from roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun random stuff. If you'd like to support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. $3 or more, we'll get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop, uh, doing personalized messages on Cameo, all those things help keep this train on the track, this hippo in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.